Hi, this is New Time on Silkway TV channel. We introduce you with the most visible news and important events that happen throughout this week in Kazakhstan and Central Asia. More details on politics, economy, social and cultural life with opinions from the most recognizable experts of Kazakhstan and the world. I am Anuri Mangali and this is what you will see today. Eurasian economic integration, what does it mean for the country's members of the organization? New Times reportage from St. Petersburg. A year of foreign policy, how Kazakhstan performed on international political arena and what to expect from a coming year. Level up, Kazakh creative industry is becoming well known far beyond its borders. What is next? New Times exclusive interview with Kazakh film and music producer Almaz Jali. And let's start from the main political event of this week. President Kasim Jomar Tokayev visited Russian St. Petersburg to take part in the meeting of Eurasian Economic Council with other leaders of Eurasian Economic Union. In St. Petersburg, Kazakh president also met with the leaders of six countries in an informal summit. We went to Russian second largest city too to find the answer to the question what might be the future of Eurasian economic integration. Petersburg. This time of the year, atmosphere in the city is very special. People are on a rush to buy gifts. The New Year Eve is just a couple of days away. Interestingly, that uh, exactly this period of time, leaders of six countries and countries of Eurasian Economic Union decided to gather to further discuss the economic integration in this part of the world. The outgoing year, as the president of Kazakhstan noted in his speech, was complicated, but the economies of the region managed to end it with GDP growth. In Kazakhstan, it reached 4.9 percent. But in 2024, according to experts, economic growth might slow down, which means that governments need to be prepared for the new challenges. Further economic integration within the EAEU market, with a focus on technological cooperation in the real sector, may become one of the key decisions in maintaining the stability of the economy. Kazakhstan изначально отстаивал принцип экономической составляющей союза. Kazakhstan initially defended the principle of the economic component of the union. We believe that EAEU participants should proceed from this agenda by their actions and decisions. One of our priority tasks is the development of technological cooperation between EAEU states in the real sector of the economy. The widespread introduction of advanced technologies and innovations will strengthen the position of economic unification on the world stage. Integration today is impossible without digital solutions. The head of state, Kasim Jomar Tokayev, also paid special attention to this issue, emphasizing Kazakhstan's successful experience in digitalization. A key priority here, as President emphasized, to create an integration information system of the EAEU countries as well as to connect digital solutions of Eurasian region with the Chinese Digital Silk Road initiative. Огромные перспективы открывает взаимодействие в сфере цифровых технологий и искусственного интеллекта, о чём сегодня говорилось. The interaction in the field of digital technology and artificial intelligence opens up huge prospects. Obviously, they will determine the future of technological progress not only of specific industries, but also of entire countries. Kazakhstan is quite successfully using digital solutions. In our country, more than 90% of public services are provided electronically. We intend to bring the export of the IT industry to $1 billion by 2026. Kazakhstan stands for the comprehensive development of cooperation in this area. The Eurasian space in the current geopolitics is the most important transport and logistics artery connecting all directions from north to south and from west to east. First of all, we're talking about the development of the North-South Corridor with the access to the states of the Middle East, Iran, Pakistan and India. In this regard, it's important to note that Kazakhstan initiative to launch the chelyabinsk bolashak iran route finds its practical embodiment. For our part, we are ready to reconstruct the bottlenecks in our railway and automobile network. We're talking about the railways Beineo-Mangastau, Makat-Kandahash and the section of the highway Beineo-Shalkar. 
Leaders of the EAEU countries signed a number of documents as a result of the meeting, including the declaration on the further development of economic processes within the organization. A full-fledged free trade agreement with Iran was also signed on the sidelines of the event. Kazakhstan held a ceremony of signing a number of agreements with the Russian counterparts on the construction of key infrastructure facilities in the country. We have signed two agreements. The first one was uh, with uh, Interal Expert regarding the construction of uh, three power plants in uh, Simei, Okshetau and Oskimeng cities. The other uh, agreement that was signed between our uh, subsidiary portfolio company Samuk Energy and uh, Russian company Orgress. Uh, according to that agreement, uh, Orgress will um, construct and put into operations uh, third and fourth blocks of um, GRESS-2 uh, with a total capacity of 1.1 gigawatt of um, uh, energy. This is Vastania Square, one of the historical sites of St. Petersburg. There, right behind my back, you can see uh, the writing, Leningrad is the city hero. And you can feel a lot of other, many more uh, historical references in this city. So St. Petersburg uh, has a, a very big historical significance, not only for Russia, but for the entire post-Soviet environment. And this is very important and very symbolic that the leaders of Commonwealth visit uh, key historical and cultural objects of St. Petersburg prior to the informal meeting in the Petrohof Grand Palace. The meeting itself was attended by the leaders of six countries, including Russia, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Belarus, and the Central Asian Five, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan. The leaders of states discussed the priority areas of cooperation for the upcoming future, and as experts noted, the informal nature of the event of the country allowed leaders to discuss all the important issues on the agenda thoroughly. Такие саммиты в будущем и станут главной формой деятельности сотрудничества независимых государств. Summits like this in the future will become the main form of activity within the organization. CIS today is not only concentrating on issues of security and economy, but also on issues of labor migration, harmonization of environmental policy, the fight against terrorism. The CIS agenda is unique. For example, it includes interparliamentary dialogue. Economic integration is the key, as leaders of Eurasian Economic Union stated during their meeting in St. Petersburg. Starting from 2024, Armenia will lead the integrative economic process, acting as a chair in the organization. The visit of the Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan after his absence in a number of events attended by the partners of the Eurasian Five was expected. Kazakhstan, meanwhile, will assume the chairmanship of the Eurasian Economic Commission from the beginning of the new year. I know Roman Gali to Legion Bissimbaya Pashat Omarov, Silkway, St. Petersburg. The Eurasian Economic Union significantly contributes to the diversification and stabilization of Kazakhstan's economy, said Taisia Marmontova, an expert in international relations. She emphasized that the EAEU is a key strategic and economic alliance within the Eurasian continent. Therefore, Kazakhstan's membership in this union brings several advantages to the country. In 2023, Kazakhstan's trade turnover with the EAEU countries reached 18.5%. $5 billion. Being part of such an alliance helps us to manage the risks associated with a limited economic diversification that is a significant challenge for Kazakhstan. It involves logistics, the development of new trade roads, and the creation of shared markets. Kazakhstan shares the world's longest border with Russia. Thanks to a rising economic union, a substantial part of Kazakhstan's GDP is generated along the Kazakhstan. Russian border. While not everything in the EU happens quickly or effortlessly, since its beginning in 2015, it has proven to be an effective organization within its designated scope. 
268. That's a total number of events with the participation of President Kasim Jamar Tokayev in 2023. Concerned to the country's foreign policy, reviewing the year, it's impossible not to highlight the vibrant political activity of Kazakhstan on the global stage. The head of state made 19 international visits, engaged in 106 meetings with heads of governments and international organizations, and had 30 encounters with leaders of foreign nations. Notable were the visits to Astana by leaders of France Emmanuel Macron and Turkey yeah, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Kazakh president also held meetings with American president Joe Biden, Chinese leader Xi Jinping, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and many other heads of states. The Kazakh delegation, led by the government members, represented the country in various parts of the world, including China, Germany, Vietnam, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, the United States, Azerbaijan and many more. Each of these meetings proved advantages for Kazakhstan, bringing in multi-billion dollar investments, fostering infrastructure and social projects and securing both economic and political commitments. And today in our studio, I'm joined by political observer Gaziz Abishev, who will discuss political outcomes of 2023 with in more details. Gaziz, thank you very much for sharing your time with us. So 2023 was very active uh, from a political point of view. Uh, President Tokai, for example, made 19 um, visits to the foreign countries, including 14 working visits so we also had uh, 19 visits of leaders of foreign countries to kazakhstan so what i'm asking is what does it mean for our country and what does it say about kazakhstan's foreign policy well it's quite uh, an important thing that our uh, uh, president uh, leads very active foreign policy which means that uh, kazakhstan is very flexible and uh, at the same time friendly with all uh, power centers uh, on the world arena, uh, which can be beneficial for us right now. Mm -hmm. If you look back to 2023 overall, so what are the main politically important initiatives uh, was sounded by Kazakhstan locally and also on the international arena? Well, uh, I think that the main idea of Tokayev's foreign policy is a pragmatism. I mean that Tokayev is very flexible and active and, and he uh, tries to defend the pragma pragmatic uh, strategic interests of uh, our country. Uh, for example, he has a very strong connection with Moscow, Beijing at the same time. He has a very friendly relationship with Brussels, Paris, Berlin, Washington and others. And also uh, he is a kind of a leader of CA5 group uh, of Central Asia right now because he is very famous and uh, most experienced uh, politician in the region. So uh, we have a also good connection with the Gulf states, uh, which means that they are ready to invest a lot of money into our region, which is uh, also very nice because it means that we uh, we don't have uh, the uh, on, uh, the only dependence uh, with uh, I mean we we don't depend only on Russia and China we also have an, an alternative sources of investment for us it's uh, a very important I mean position what initiatives were important uh, for for the domestic I mean uh, audience for for people of Kazakhstan well, sounded by president well I I mean that there is a very um, uh, very nice duo of President Tokayev and Mirziyoyev because uh, I think that Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan is the main axis of Central Asia. Their friends have a good relationship and it means that this economic and political cooperation between Astana and Tashkent is stabilizing um, uh, factor for the entire region. Mm -hmm. uh, and also this, this issue uh, of, of uh, uh, lack of water uh, which uh, would haunt us in uh, next decades. Uh, this issue should be resolved, I mean, pragmatically and rationally uh, in a constructive way. And I'm sure that President Tokayev, um, leading some negotiations with President of uh, Tajikistan, President of Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, uh, he is able to uh, lead our country to the, uh, to the I mean, good results for, both, for, for all countries of the region. You also mentioned that uh, Kazakhstan promotes principle of multilateral approach in its foreign policy. So uh, what do you think uh, will be the future, um, future developments uh, in the vectors of Kazakhstan's diplomacy? Um, can we see some definite patterns right now? What are we will be focusing on in our 
um, international cooperation. No, we, we, we should understand that our uh, rational foreign policy defined not uh, by any particular leader of, or any uh, particular uh, official, but the, I mean, the situation um, uh, around us. I mean, we, we're in, in a sort of geographical trap, just uh, right in the middle of our continent, and uh, we have a common uh, many thousand kilometer, uh, kilometers border with China and Russia, which are um, very interesting inter international nuclear powers. And uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, our geography and uh, the, our international situation defines our international policy. And it, it says that um, we, uh, it implies that we have to be very flexible, friendly, and uh, uh, we should have a good connection with all uh, centers in the world. So this is a long-term, right, vision? Yeah, long-term long strategy. And you know that on international arena, Kazakhstan always have been uh, the most strategic country in the world, in the region, because we have a, uh, I mean, uh, a very, very strategic thinking uh, because we need to survive. To end up, to sum up our um, dialogue today, 2024, uh, as uh, many political observers, experts say, will be very turbulent from a political point of view. We will have, we will witness, we will be witnessing um, elections of president in different parts of the world, also in the countries uh, which are Kazakhstan's key partners. So, uh, what to expect? from all that global political processes for the country like Kazakhstan? I don't think that those uh, elections can, I mean, can affect the Kazakhstan's position on international arena, because we do understand that uh, the uh, right now, as uh, pollsters and uh, political science experts says that in Russia, result uh, is very predictable. And uh, about the United States, for example, uh, whether it's uh, Mr. Biden, Mr. Trump, or Ms. Haley, it doesn't matter. Because right now, um, uh, USA actually is not uh, involved in, in, in our business right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if, if Republican become a president of the United States, of course, he would start a huge trade economic war with China. But I don't think it would uh, affect us uh, too much. Mm -hmm. And uh, in general, speaking in general, what uh, role uh, Kazakhstan will play on, on, on all that global process? I don't think that Kazakhstan uh, should play any role. But I mean, the Kazakhstan is very pragmatic, rational, and uh, peace-loving nation, and we should, I mean, still uh, uh, provide those principles on the international arena, like that we have a set of uh, values and we would support it uh, in a friendly way on international arena. Thank you very much, Gaziz, Thank for you. your time, for your answers. We wish you all the best in the upcoming new year. Thank you. Happy New Year. Kazakhstan faces the end of 2023 with a GDP growth of 4.9 percent. Such a result serves as a notably positive indicator of the country's economic vitality, despite external shocks. According to the World Bank's 2023 report, the global community is currently struggling with unprecedented combination of crises, including inflation, conflicts and food shortages. Darina Sagulov is ready to provide a detailed review on Kazakh economy of this year and the challenges it had to cope with. At the beginning of 2023, the Kazakh government set a target for all ministries to achieve 4% economic growth. Despite the current geopolitical conditions, the challenging objective has been accomplished. According to the Ministry of National Economy, Kazakhstan's economic growth reached 4.9%. Actually, this growth is quite impressive. To put in the perspective, some European countries are currently facing a recession. The overall global economic growth is 3%, and Kazakhstan's growth at 4.9% exceeds the global economic pace. However, economic growth doesn't always correlate with an improvement in the well-being of population. According to the Bureau of National Statistics, the real incomes of citizens decreased by 1.6% in the first quarter of 2023 compared to the same period of last year. 
Основная проблема, потому что у нас высокая инфляция. То есть, если брать... The main issue is high inflation. Now it reached 10.3%. However, it's important to note a trend towards a reduction in the inflation growth rate. For instance, at the beginning of the year, the consumer price index showed an increase of over 20%. Thus, the annual inflation growth rates have halved. Experts consider 2023 a successful year for Kazakhstan's national currency, despite a substantial decline in September to 482 tenge for dollar. The national bank successfully stabilized the currency by the end of the year. In nominal terms, 2023 has been a fortunate year for the tenge. We are concluding it with the dollar exchange rate slightly above 450 tenge. The primary determining factor is the global market dynamics for raw commodities, particularly. Oil. The current oil prices are comfortable for us. Great contributions to economic growth came from attracted investments, $32 billion over 11 months. These achievements was possible due to governmental measures aimed at improving the investment climate. However, despite positive developments, insufficient economic diversification remains Kazakhstan's primary challenge. There are too many eggs in one basket. У нас, по сути, есть... In a sense, we rely heavily on a single industry. If oil prices had taken a significant hit this year, our economic metrics would have looked drastically different. Achieving the desired level of economic diversification, it's not possible for us at the moment. According to the official forecast for Kazakhstan's socio-economic development, government considers the projected economic growth of 5.3% next year to be promising. This figure also surpasses global averages, signifying an enhanced contribution of Kazakhstan to the world economy. Dorian Sagulov, New Time. Meanwhile, experts from IMF forecast a slight slowdown in the economy of Uzbekistan in 2024, as well as an acceleration in inflation that was outlined by the experts during their recent visit to the country. These and other interesting news topics from Central Asia are in the review of my colleague Ojet Shigirbaev. Good evening, Ojet. The floor is yours. Thank you, Anur. I'm ready to share my top four news topics from Central Asia this week, just in a moment. Tajikistan adopts Kazakhstan's IT solutions. Dushanbe and Astana signed a memorandum of cooperation in the field of e government systems. Currently, a team of Kazakhstani specialists is carrying out a technical assessment of the country's infrastructure and the possibilities of implementing their IT solutions. In particular, we are talking about SmartBridge, unified platform of internet resources, government bodies, and the smart information and analytical system data Ukumet. Dushanbe and Ashabat are expanding cooperation in the field of science, medicine, and healthcare. The head of the diplomatic mission of Tajikistan, Mr. Wafo Niyabekzada, met with the deputy chairman of the government of Turkmenistan, Mr. Nur Muhammad Amanipesov and discussed with him the possibility of expanding humanitarian programs between the two countries, especially in the field of training, new personnel, youth policy and medicine. Let us remember that earlier Mr. Amani Pesov came to Dushanbe to agree on possible solutions to the RAL problem. IMF mission states that economic growth of Uzbekistan will slow down in 2024. The IMF mission expects that economic growth in Uzbekistan will slow down in 2024 from 5.7% to 5.2%, as well as inflation to accelerate to 11% due to increased energy tariffs. It's noted that it's necessary to continue fight tight monetary policy and significantly optimize budget expenses and revenues. By the end of 2023, the 12-month inflation rate is projected to decline by more than 3 percentage points to 9 percent, comparing to the same period of the last year. Meanwhile, the government of Uzbekistan intends to take appropriate measures to reduce the consolidated deficit to 4 percent of GDP in 2024 and 3 percent in 2025. Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan additionally agreed on about 12 kilometers of border in Bastan City from December 17 to 23, a regular meeting of topographic working groups of the government delegations of Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan on the delimitation and demarcation of the Kyrgyz-Tajik state border was held, at which the parties agreed on 11.88 kilometers of the state border of the two countries. The parties will continue to work on this issue, uh, describing the remaining areas at the next meeting, which will take place on the territory of the Kyrgyz Republic. Following the meeting, a corresponding protocol was signed. 
that's all from my part. I'm giving the floor back to you. Thank you. That was Political Observer Ozhe Shigirbayev with his weekly review on Central Asia. And let's move on. Saudi Arabia is joining the CICA Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia as an observer state. Let me remind you that Kazakhstan chairs the organization this year. Saudi Arabia is an observer in CICA will further increase the representation of this sub-region and also enhance the cooperation in Asian continent, experts noted. Gaz Inform International News Agency collected all the important headlines of foreign press about Kazakhstan this week. Let's have a look on it. Caspian News published an article on December 24 discussing the potential construction of the nuclear power station in Kazakhstan, inciting the head of the Kazakhstan Atomic Power Stations Company, Timur Jantikin. He stated that the construction of the country's first nuclear plant may cost up to 15 billion US dollars. He further emphasized that the project was not presently in the execution phase and the efforts made thus far were part of the pre project's activities. In essence, they were in the process of considering different options for Kazakhstan's inaugural nuclear power plant and the current efforts primarily constituted preliminary groundwork. However, the nation still expects the national referendum that will decide the fate of the nuclear power plant in Kazakhstan. Budapest Business Journal published an article on December 22nd about the start of production at a gas field in Kazakhstan by companies from Kazakhstan, Hungary and China. Mol said the first well at the Rashkovska gas and condensate field in the west of the country had started production with a rate of 300,000 cubic meters of raw gas per day. In the pilot phase with one well in production, the Rashkovska field is expected to contribute 1,300 barrels of oil equivalent per day to group level production, reads the article. Four additional wells will be put into production in the third quarter of 2024, boosting production to 1.5 million cubic meters of gas per day. Azer News reported on December 28th that Saudi Arabia joined the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia as an observer state. Kazakhstan chairs the organization until 2024. This event was an important milestone in the further geographical expansion of this pan-continental organization for strengthening peace and security in Asia. Saudi Arabia is one of the Gulf states among which the CICA already includes such member states as as Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates. The observer status of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia will further increase the representation of this sub-region in the CICA and thus expand and enrich cooperation throughout Asia, reads the article. That's it for the press review this week. We will continue following the most interesting and important media coverage on Kazakhstan and this region. <laughs> A film that promises to become a real breakthrough for Kazakh cinema industry, the new thriller movie Duster, which means tradition, released on big screens in Kazakhstan for the first time for the local film market. The problem of domestic violence and abuse is portrayed in the most suitable genre for this horror. The author of the film emphasized that society's harsh treatment of women is often justified by outdated traditions. According to the prosecutor general's office, at least 80 women die at the hands of domestic tyrants in Kazakhstan every year. The creators of the film believe that tightening laws is not the only way to change the situation. Shedding light on the issue on the big screen and especially in the media can impact the perception of gender-based violence. Almaz Jali, the Duster film's producer and a well-known Kazakh entrepreneur, has ambitious plans to take the movie to the international stage, recognizing the global relevance of the issue of domestic violence. 
In an exclusive interview to the New Time, Almaz Jali also shared insights into the Kazakh creative industry and his ideas for promoting Kazakh media content worldwide. Please watch the fragment of the interview right now. <laughs> Almas, thank you for joining us. Uh, let me start from this point. Uh, could you tell us more about this movie, Duster? Yeah, the, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. First of all, yeah, the, the name of the movie, Duster, which means tradition in English language. Uh, and the main idea is that our culture, I think that any other culture in the world, has some outdated negative uh, traditions. Mm -hmm. Traditions that could uh, impact negatively to our people, to our future, to our present time. And um, the movie is about the violence uh, which, which uh, is committed on a daily basis in Kazakhstan, the violence against, uh, I, I would say, female part of the country. And of course we want to stop that, but what is the best way to stop that is to change the ideology, mm -hmm. the, your attitude towards the, uh, towards the um, uh, violence. Mm -hmm. and, we think that you can make the punishment for the violence against women more, I mean, more types of punishment, but it's not going to help if you don't change the ideology of people. Mm -hmm. We have to make our best to show, especially to our younger generation, mm -hmm. that violence against women is not okay in, a, mm -hmm. in any country, in any culture. So basically, this is the main idea of the movie. Speaking about creative industry that is yeah. very familiar to you, uh, what is the creative industry today in Kazakhstan? What, it, what does it represent? And uh, does it need governmental uh, support or mm -hmm. it can be independently? Well, uh, till today, the uh, creative industry, which is about music, skills, IT, and everything else, was uh, developed without any governmental support. Mm -hmm. But I think, for example, you know, we have this IT, uh, IT part of our country which is supported heavily for the last five years. And yes, it made huge steps towards progression. And I think if government supports us, at least with, uh, I don't know, getting rid of VAT tax and different taxes for the artists, for the directors, for the whole industry, of course, mm -hmm. it, it is like obviously going to help the, the industry since the industry is going to feel that the government is supporting it. It's going to be has more attention mm -hmm. towards the products we are, we are providing to the country. And I think that if uh, if we calculate how much money and how much content the industry provided for the last three years, the export of, of this industry is going to be much more rather than any other industry here in Kazakhstan, even the oil business and everything. To sum up, uh, what features and trends of uh, Kazakh media market in 2023 can you highlight? Uh, I can highlight the, I think, the language thing. Mm -hmm. That Kazakh language content is getting even more popular than we were True. Uh, forecasting last year. And as you can see, our movie Duster is only in Kazakh language for now, with mm -hmm. Russian and English subtitles, of course. But uh, as, a, as a producer, as an entrepreneur, I was, of course, I was calculating the potential returns. Mm -hmm. And I see that the Kazakh market is already enough for the movie to make it ROI, mm -hmm. which is really good, given the fact that we have only 20 million people living in Kazakhstan and only part of it is uh, in only some parts of Kazakhstan, cinemas are available. Kazakh creative industry is super independent. Mm -hmm. We're not looking towards West or Russia or Turkey. We have our own ideology. We have our own products. Mm -hmm. And inshallah that I, our neighboring countries, they know our artists, they listen to Kazakh music, they understand the Kazakh music already as K-pop -pop culture in Korea. It is yes. prevalent around the world. Well, mm -hmm. I can say that we are um, we have more potential because if mm -hmm. Koreans they're doing their content in Korean language mm -hmm. for the Korean market and it's getting really popular around the world mm -hmm. we Kazakhs we're speaking Kazakh language and we're producing Kazakh content for the local people we understand and speak Russian language we understand Ukraine Russia Azerbaijan and everyone else we are Turkey country I mean the nation is Turkey as Turkey as Azerbaijan Kyrgyzstan and everyone Uzbekistan so understand them as well so we can provide content for them as well and we're Muslims we can provide content for Saudi Arabia Dubai and other Muslim countries which means that we're well the super I'd say universal potentiality for the creative industry since we understand everyone and we can 
and well, do something useful for them. And I think we have to collaborate more with different markets. Mm -hmm. And markets are open for us. So this mm -hmm. is, well, basically, mm -hmm. I'm really positive about the future of, the, of our country in terms of creative industry. Thank you. Yeah. Great, great. Almas, thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. This is, by the way, a very good ending of our program today and I think very promising development of creative industry in Kazakhstan. This is the latest episode of the new time in 2023. We wish you all the best in coming 2024. Let us all have more positive news and exciting events happening next year. Let me remind you that all the main news about Kazakhstan in Central Asia you can find here. More special projects about our country you can also watch on Silk Ray TV channel. So stay tuned and see you in 2024.